Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to focus in a little bit on an author who I've been reading a, a fair bit of recently and who I've been absolutely loving and that author is Sarah Baum um, and I realise in almost every video I've ever spoken about her I keep on calling her Sarah because just my brain defaults there. Um, but Sarah Baum um, is an Irish author who um, wrote one of my favourite books from last year which was Seven Steeples and I absolutely fell in love with the book and as a result wanted to go back and read everything else she'd ever written and uh, luckily she only had three more. It's always luckily in terms of uh, being able to actually catch up um, but I'm very very excited to see more of what she writes in future because I've just been really really excited by everything uh, she's done so far. So this this video is in some ways a bit of a love letter to her books <laughs> uh, because I've just been really really blown away by just the variety in them but also this real consistency of voice um, in a way that really appeals to me and how I like to read and the kinds of books I like to read. So let's start off with the book that started it all for me at least, uh, Seven Steeples. Um, so this is a book in which not very much happens and that's kind of the point and I realised that at first that sounds really sort of pretentious and ridiculous but actually what I really loved about it was the almost tongue-in-cheek aspect of how it does that. Um, so the core concept is that a, uh, a couple who are already a bit joined at the hip move to um, a small house because they want to continue doing what they're doing which is lots of hiking and they see this you know these giant hills sort of off the back um of where they live where this house is and they think great we're going to do this we're going to climb it it's going to be fantastic but actually their life slowly shrinks and shrinks so they spend more and more time in this house they're not working and so they suddenly don't have money coming in and so they're scrimping and saving on pretty much anything and everything and what that basically starts looking like is the house falls apart around them and every year they say this year is going to be different we're going to climb that the you know climb that hill we're going to go over and do this and every year they don't and there's something really quite brilliant about that book I think um that really excited me in terms of how she writes and how she thinks which is um the 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 ability to build this whole world around nothing really happening so actually we watch as the house decays we watch as little things in their relationship shift and change um and you find yourself watching the scenery in the most glorious way so um i think for me what was so exciting about that was that you find yourself zeroing in on details that are otherwise quite innocuous right that I'm really focused on how this door has been, re the, the hinges of this door have been replaced, but actually they don't really have the proper materials. But then when that falls apart again, they find new materials. And we watch this slow degradation in this really interesting way. And that really made me interested in, in who she was as an author. And I then went and read some of the others. So I'm gonna do a very quick overview of what some of those books are. So first up, her first book, uh, Spill, Simmer, Falter, Wither, um, a sort of reference to the names of seasons, so as in spring, summer, fall for the US, and winter. Um, and this is just a really interesting and kind of bizarre book. Um, so basically a man meets a dog and they sort of have this relationship together of sort of looking after each other, this kind of companionship, not relationship as in, you know what I mean, just dog and man um and they it, what i just find really fun is it's I, I hate comparing authors um but i'm gonna do a teeny comparison here which is this sort of playfulness and silliness um mixed with the sort of artiness of sort of higher concepts and things like that um of someone like ali smith um and i i adore ali smith's writing and this reminds me a lot of the bits I really enjoy about Ali Smith. Um, very, very different writers in many ways, but there's a, there's a similar joy to the writing that I find very interesting, where there is a, a wider, broader concept being developed and being thought about. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on the, the everyday, the mundane, the domestic, and find the little moments in between that. And that comes up a lot, especially um, in A Line Made by Walking, her next book, where there is a real push, I think, towards um, artistic concepts and those being played off against some of the, the mundane. So in this, we have a character called Frankie, um, who is going through a bit of a tough time. She is showing signs of depression. 
Um, her life seems to be at a bit of a dead end in some ways. And she has this strong urge to then go and create. But it's all mixed in with these very sort of bizarre uh, uh, kind of comparisons almost. So she, she walks around taking pictures of dead birds, uh, well, dead animals rather. So sometimes birds, sometimes a badger, sometimes a rat. And she's almost creating this sort of art collection based around these photos of dead animals. And we actually have the photos of those dead animals in here. So perhaps people who are a bit squeamish, maybe not the book for you, maybe an audio version of this might be better. Um, but uh, it's all sort of part of her trying to reconstruct a bit of a life for herself. So by understanding, well, by trying to understand the deaths of these animals, she's trying to understand herself. And we uh, um, also often have this main character, Frankie, referring to pieces of art. So she will see something, she'll start spiraling a little bit or start panicking, or maybe her thoughts will just be um, a bit emptier. And so she'll challenge herself to start thinking of artworks that talk about a very, very specific theme. So um, the absence of feeling or the, the, the strength of grief or something like that. And she will then pursue it within that. And I just found this really interesting as a book. There's something about the, the narrative that I found so compelling. It's written in this sort of very chatty, very conversational style at times, but with everything around the mundane being really core to it. So you know, we have these discussions about going to a shop or doing whatever. And I think this sort of, for me, crystallises Sarah Baum's ability to find magic in the everyday, in the sort of domestic, in the, the things that people often overlook. She's talking about high concepts um, around art and about feelings and, and all of these other things, but she finds the inspiration for those or finds evidence of those in the everyday and I think I just found that really captivating um, in this book and that links on very very nicely to Handiwork um, which uh, I read recently and really adored uh, which is a non-fiction book but looking at um, how she sees the creative process and in many ways some of the the sort of key themes that come up in the previous two books come up in Handiwork in quite an interesting way so um, she spends a lot of the book create it, talking about kind of creating these wooden bird sculptures and um, it's sort of her fighting with this idea of perfectionism in some ways of, you know, of the hundred birds, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of bits of wood sculpture that she makes. Some of them will have a perfect eye. Some of them will have a perfect uh, mouth. But there doesn't seem to be one that is fully perfect. But instead, the purpose and the point of everything is just to keep going, to keep creating. My books are falling. Uh, one sec, there we go. Um, and just the um, to kind of keep creating, to keep going, even when things feel at their hardest. Um, but also woven into this are sort of lots of big discussions around the purpose of art, the purpose of creation, um, the purpose of life, and various other things. In a really small book, like it's very short, because even though it's about, it's about uh, 200 pages, but a lot of those pages are sort of very short on text. I um, mean, you've got lots of pictures as well, including some of the bird sculptures. So I just, I just found it really different to what I thought it was going to be. I think I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a, a very earnest, I'm talking about my, uh, my craft um, kind of thing. And actually, I just, I found this really quite magical in how it's really quite grounded in reality, but also is just full of this magic. And yeah, so I think, you know, long story short, I really enjoy her books. <laughs> Sarah Baum, I think, uh, from the, the from her book so far, from the four, I believe it's only four she's published so far, um, have just all been absolute winners for me and so interesting. And I've thought about them a lot since. Um, so yeah, really, really excited to see what comes next from her. Um, and I really do urge you to, to give her a read if you um, if you think this sounds interesting to you. I realise I may have turned some of you off from this entirely, <laughs> either by comparisons to Ali Smith or by talking about art and whatever. Fine, that's all good. But I think uh, she's just such an exciting author um, and um, I'm really keen to see what comes next. I'd probably say as a good starting point, Seven Steeples was a really good intro for me. Um, uh, whereas I think maybe some of like, the other ones here, maybe, I don't know, see how you get on with Seven Steeples, I think, basically. Also, it's my favourite from the four. I've been Bob the Booker, talking about Sarah Baum's writing. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.